What's going on guys? We are out here on our absolute favorite lake. Fishing has been pretty down. pretty slow. Yeah. Day's so slow. Uh, what do you want to do when it's slow? You want to cover lots and lots of water and that's what we're doing today. Pulling planer boards with some crawler harnesses. We might have our first walleye of the afternoon. Sure is, sure feels like one. Oh, watch out, Buck. Hoping this is just a tanker. Usually when uh, this pattern is on, we find quality, quality fish. And this feels like it could be one. What do you think, Thomas? Looks like a walleye. Looks like a walleye. Nice one. Decent fish. Take a look at that, nice fish. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit how, about how you guys can come out here, do the same thing, be successful when fishing is slow, cover lots of water and put fish like this in the boat. All right, what's going on guys? Well, we just let Mitch's fish go, came a little bit farther down the spot, saw a nice side imaging pot of fish and uh, we are hooked up again. Hard to say how big he is quite yet, but you know, in the summer like this, we're running a mix a lot of times on these bigger clear lakes in our area. You know, we don't have huge lakes, we don't have huge flats because the lakes are only you know, 1,000 to 6,000 acres big. So we're basically covering kind of a mix of open water and structure fish. And we're gonna tell you all about, you know, setting depths for how you do that. And, uh, you know, trolling past basically where you wanna troll, where you wouldn't wanna troll and stuff like that. Um, but we're gonna land this walleye first. I do believe we've got a nice one on here. Always nice undoing boards by yourself. I'd help you out, bud, but I gotta run this. Uh, yeah, someone's gotta be the cameraman, right, Mitchell? That was like on. A plunker? Mm. I don't Plunk. think he's real big, but he's digging a little bit. 28, 29, 30. Great way to fish all summer long. You know, we did a video earlier this year on doing this with one rod, spinning rod, and kind of manipulating it down the weed edge. Now it's the middle of summer, we got fish spread out and it's perfect time to kind of long line troll like this. Not a big one, but another poly through the walleye here. There he is. He's off in the net, we'll give you guys a look. All right guys, there we go. Another nice chunky, probably 19 inch fish. You know, that's how we spend our time on the Clear Lakes up here because the quality is absolutely solid. Awesome fish, and Mitch would agree with me, but this is 100% undersized for what we've actually been catching uh, the last week or so here. So we're gonna let that one go. Yeah, I was I was mid P, board went back. That's always when you get the best bite. Just there, classic bite. So uh, we just- Turn that hooker off. Oh, sorry. I didn't, real, I didn't even realize it was on. Um, so we just threw Tom's fish back not too long ago, swung around here. We are trolling over some structure right now. So yeah, kind uh, of open water. That one was over open water. I guess. What'd you say? That one was that was our long that was our deep rod. So that yeah, was 90 feet on an ounce. I guess. Close, close. So, so anyways, we're gonna walk through and show you what we mean by trolling over structure and some open water flats out here. In the meantime, I got a, just a hog to reel in. All right guys, so real quick, you know, where do you pull spinners? So obviously when you're pulling spinners with six rods, you're not cutting and weaving down spots. You know, like that, doing something like that was something where you'd run a couple of down rods, going to reel down a tight break, um, or just hand line a spinner. You know, and we're doing this, we're looking to cover a lot of area. And realistically on our lakes up here, there's just not big enough flats to really do this most of the time until the fish push real deep. But for right now, basically what we're doing, we're trolling a mixture, like we talked about, of basin, and structure. Now, like we were talking about as well, you know, a lot of times these fish, whether they're in the basin of the lake or on a rock bar, weed edge, whatever it is, they're gonna be at the same depth. So right here, we have a lake map of the spot. You guys can see here. And here's a big open basin. So my green is kind of the targeted depth that we're trolling. And that's 15, or that's 20 to 30 feet right now. We're kind of looking for structure in that zone. We're not putting our baits down 30 feet, but we're fishing in that zone. So, you know, like right here, for example, we have a super, super tight break, like you can see. There's not a lot of green on this spot, so it's gonna be really hard to get six rods on structure in that spot, right? So we're not really too concerned about trolling down a break line that's that steep. When we're looking at running six rods, we're looking at flats like this. And here you can see there's a real nice one. Starts down here, 
and it runs all the way up into this big other finger. It's also over basin. So if we were to start out setting up a trolling spread, you know, maybe we'd start right here where the spot starts getting pretty wide and we have some good, uh, basically good acreage to cover in that same zone. We'd hook it up into this hump and maybe when we got out to something like this here, which is another steep break, we'd cut it over to a hump like this, which is 32. Now, a lot of times when walleye suspend in these deep clear lakes, they suspend over deep structure like that. They're not on the bottom at 22 feet, but they might be 10 feet off bottom in 32 feet. So those fish might be 22 down, which is basically the same range we're looking at covering when we're fishing structure. So, you know, you guys can kind of see how you mix it up here, doing it in structure and open water stuff, and how you don't have to change your depths a whole lot to fish for both these same fish. Feels nice, but we are definitely tangled under the board, so it's hard to say. Ooh, it's a nice northern Wisconsin walleye. It's a tanker. Like we said, amazing quality, all that skate. We oh, got him though. Got him. All right, here she is. Nice, nice Hayward fish right there. About average for the trolling bite, right? Yeah, what about you think, 22. Tom? About 22, nice fish. All right, let's get this one back. Speak to me. All right, guys, we are hooked up here. Over here, over here. We are hooked up here. You know, Mitch just caught that nice fish. We we're kind of coming over open water. That bait was about 22 down over about 35, 40. And we actually just came back into kind of like a, a big flat section of a point. All right guys, so real quick on our setup and basically how we're trolling and stuff like that. So we're basically running the pretty standard June bug spinner. Um, sometimes I run those with floats just because I like to keep them up a little bit more, but not super picky there. I'm not super picky on color. Um, my speed wise when you're running these, you do pretty much want to go like one one and up one one would be the absolute lowest you know there are some things that you can run a lot slower than one different kinds of blades stuff like that but for running these june bugs in clear water that's about the speed i like you know we're running crawlers this time of year typically if i'm fishing with leeches um, or pulling spinners like in june or around super heavy weed cover then i like leeches a little bit more they tend to stay on a lot better fish tend to not pick them off quite as much um, so yeah that's pretty much a setup there when i'm fishing clear water I like these real long snells this is an eight and a half foot rod so this is about a six, six and a half foot lead on this thing. I like getting this away from the bottom bouncer. I don't like running on a real short tie, but that brings me to the next point, you know, the bottom bouncer. You know, I've run snap weights, I've run inline weights, I've run all sorts of stuff, and for some reason, um, you know, when I'm doing this kind of mix uh, structure and open water stuff, I do like running just a regular bottom bouncer. I tend to use a lot of one ounces. Um, some guys are probably like, that's way too light for trolling 22 feet of water. But, you know, to be honest with you, when I get out over a lot of these spots, some of it's huge rock. And one problem you run into is when you're running like a two ounce bottom bouncer, is anytime you manipulate your boat, like I was talking about, these lakes aren't huge like Mille Lacs. We're not fishing these huge areas that have just a big, huge mess of flats. Um, so whenever you're swinging to kind of go from one spot to the next when you're trolling, you know, one side's gonna drop down. If you're running that two ounce bottom bouncer on 40 feet, trying to get 20 feet down and you're big rock you're gonna hang up so these one ounces seem to get snagged a lot less you got to let a little, a little bit more line yeah we troll a lot of like 50 to 90 feet of line out when we're doing this uh, but that's kind of the setup there and then basically you know you need a line counter to replicate this kind of stuff especially if you're running boards uh, so that's the setup there pretty much any line counter will work uh, that's a Dakota but anything's gonna work for you um, you just have to be able to replicate what you're doing I think it's a nice one here Mitchell he's about 50 feet out Got the net for you, dog. You gonna net this one for me? What a guy! What a guy! The guy holds the camera. Buck, what do you think? Oh, here he is, Mitchell. What a guy! He films. He nets. Catches big fish. He puts big catches. Big fish I've ever seen. This guy just does everything. All right, so I'm gonna back up, which is a very important part of trolling. It feels like a good one, Mitch. Oh, it looks like a nice fish there. Got him in the bag. Beautiful Hayward area walleye right there. Smoke that spinner rig. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something kind of about pulling spinners and basically how we do it. You know, there's a lot of lakes like doing this in the Great Lakes or trolling on lakes that are really, really flat. That's a lot more simple. This is kind of our setup on these lakes with a lot of varying depth with fish both on open water and fish on structure. So we're gonna let that guy go and uh, maybe do something else. We'll see. There he goes.